Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again to the 2016 Little League World Series here in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. From the Williamsport Sun Gazette, I'm Mitch Rupert, standing alongside the one and only Dr. Chris Massey. And Chris, we're starting to get kind of the nitty gritty of this tournament here. It's the day of the winner's bracket finals on both the U.S. and international side of the tournament. And to me, this is the most important day of the tournament. You win here, you set yourself up, and you're pitching up for Saturday into that that. U.S. or international final, and you can start talking about Sunday in the world final a little bit. Is this the most important round? I think so. You know, you got to, uh, if, you, if, you, if you lose, it's hard to, to get to that world championship. You can come back maybe and win Saturday, but then you're all but depleted trying to, to trying to win on Thursday and Saturday to get to that Sunday game. And in fact, I since they've went to a double elimination in 2010, I can't remember a team that lost a Wednesday game in the winner's bracket final and came back and win a world championship. So it's it's pretty huge to set up that pitching. It's it's hold, held true as we saw California lose yesterday in a loser's bracket game that now no team since they've gone to 16 teams that has lost in the first round has ever come back, I think, to either make a U.S. or international final, let alone a world final. That's going to hold true. But even on a smaller scale like you said that extra game it, it means so much just trying to work through those those six innings we talked yesterday about the the ryan harlos devin ob matchup when we're going to see new york versus kentucky today to me the x factor chris is going to be the way kentucky runs the bases they like to put a lot of pressure on the teams they play devin ob is a speed demon out of the batter's box is that going to be one of the x factors tonight I mean, if, if Obi gets on first base, that's that's a weapon. I mean, and he's got power too. He could he could just circle the bases, but they yeah, like you said, they've got a lot of speed, and if they can put the pressure on New York, that makes a difference. And if, if they can get an early lead on New York, I mean, New York's had the luxury no, of, of jumping out to three nothing and two nothing leads the first two games. If Kentucky can come out, put some pressure on the bases, get a run or two across in the first inning, and, and make New York play catch up. Obviously, it's going to work to their advantage. The the name of the game for the Enwell New York team has kind of been pitching and defense. They haven't torn the cover off the ball so much. Is that how they win ball games? Pitching and defense? It has been. I mean, it's held through. Held, held through through. Uh, I have to work on my grammar there. How about but held, it's held through? through, through. through. Yeah, there it's go. a tongue twister. They've. Uh, through That's the least of the mistakes we've made so well, far today. Yeah, so. we got a, quite a blooper reel. <laughs> but if you look, if you look at the Mid Atlantic Regional. And in their first two series games, it's it's definitely been true. They, I mean, they scored six runs against Keystone in the Mid Atlantic Final. They had an eight-run game there at, mid, at the Mid Atlantic Regional, but they also won a game one nothing. And uh, I mean, they they've outscored their teams by almost 200 runs this year. But yeah, I mean, they'll be the first ones to tell you they they can hit the ball, but the pitching and defense has been there all season. And, you do that you got a chance to win any, every, every game they're in and that's that's been the key as an orioles fan you'll appreciate the earl weaver way of playing baseball pitching defense in the three-run homer <laughs> and new york's come up with some big homers so far absolutely i mean ryan harlow's in the first inning of both games a three-run shot and two-run shot and with the pitching that they have i mean you get out to that early lead I, it helps them relax a little bit more and it puts that much more pressure on the opponent Especially when I think when New York's got that home, the de facto home crowd sure. behind them, uh, I think it makes it seem that much tougher for whoever they're playing to think, to think that they can come back and pull it out. Before we go, we're not going to get into to Iowa and Tennessee playing because by the time we post this, that game's probably pretty much going to be done. But great rallies Woo! from both teams yesterday to stay alive. Iowa winning in the bottom of the sixth, I believe it was, yep. and Tennessee winning in extra innings last night. So those two teams have found some momentum, found some confidence, and looking forward to seeing them play tonight. Chris, I know you don't see the international side a whole lot, but we have an interesting pitching matchup between South Korea and Panama tonight. Joaquin Tejeda in his first start for Panama, four and a third innings, he struck out nine. Jun Ho Jong for South Korea in his first start, four innings pitch, he struck out 10. Two guys who can throw hard. The X factor is right here. Joaquin Tejeda walked five in his first start. They can't afford to be giving South Korea free bases tonight, can they? No, no, I mean, I, I think South Korea has established itself as as the class of this tournament so far. Uh, I, I think they're clearly the team to be. And yeah, he's, he's gonna have to be I, not perfect, but but pretty darn close. He's, he's gonna have to be at the top of his game. You know, I, I think I think South Korea is the better team, but I think Tejada, if he's if he's on and he pitches well and he knocks and he cuts down on those walks, he has a chance to maybe steal them the game. 
Uh, but I think South I think South Korea's pitching depth is is outstanding. So I think it'll be interesting how they use their starter tonight. But even if they were to lose to Panama tonight, I still like their chances coming back because they have I think greater pitching depth than anybody Absolutely. here. And they haven't had to use a whole lot of that pitching depth either. The one thing we see, no matter what the game is here at the Little League World Series, these teams can hit fastballs. And you can see by the number of strikeouts that both these kids had in their first starts, they can throw fastballs. You know, Tejeda throws up near 80 miles an hour. I believe Jong is north of 70 as well. Is that going to be kind of the interesting contrast tonight? These guys want to throw fastballs. These teams want to hit fastballs. Yeah, I mean, it's it's power versus power. I thought when... Uh You'd have to help me with the Canada pitcher's name. Uh, they, they oh, L Loretto Sinascouchi. And I mean, he, it's not like he was mixing it up against sure. Japan. He was going straight power. And Japan traditionally will feast on fastballs. And I think he just challenged them and he won that challenge. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, if they try to win that battle and just go, hey, we're going power on power. Or if they do try to mix it up. I mean, because if you've got the off speed stuff to go with the pure power. It's almost not fair up there. That's the thing I'm surprised at is sitting here and watching these kids, the way they stay back on breaking balls and they're able to attack it. At 12 years old, I'm 33 and I still can't do it. You know, there's a reason I only had seven at bats my senior year in high school is because I couldn't hit a fastball or a breaking ball. There's a reason you ran track as a senior instead yeah. of playing baseball. So. I can steal a lot of bases, but stealing first was the, that was, that was the hard one for me. And holding on to the baton in, in the 4 by one was also a problem for you as well. Well, that, that was in a, they, they didn't tell me you weren't allowed to throw it in anger after. after I learned quick. <laughs> How'd cross country work out for you? No, we, we won't get it. <laughs> That's going to do it for us here from day seven of the Little League World Series, the Wednesday. I had to write it, feels it down. like day 37. <laughs> right. I had to write it down because I knew I was going to forget. That's going to do it for us here from South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. You read all of Chris's stories and Ben Burgandy's stories at www.sungazette.com. Follow us on Twitter. I'll throw our handles up here and give us a shout out if you think we're uh, just a bunch of goofballs on this thing. Well, we already know we are. Yeah, we already know we are, but we like to, to have that confirmed yeah. at the same time. So from the Williamsport Sun Gazette, he is the doctor. Chris Massey, I'm Mitch Rupert. We'll talk to you later. Have a good one, everyone.